Today is the baptism of the Lord Sunday. The day that, the Sunday that we remember Christ's baptism. It was two years ago this week that I had the privilege of standing on the bank of the Jordan River performing a service of remembering of our baptism, a recommittal to the life and the, the service that God had called myself and some other colleagues um, from Garrett that were on this trip to the Middle East. And as I waded down into the water to get the water to do the baptism um, up on shore, it was the beginning of a 40-day journey for me. Very similar to what we heard in the 23rd Psalm of green pastures and yet dark valleys. So hear these words from the Gospel writer of Mark. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. In the morning, while it was still very dark, got up and went to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. He went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. This is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Last week, as we briefly talked about the star and the, the magi, the wise men that came and were on that road to Jesus, found him. I said that was the transition of the end of the road of people coming to Jesus and the beginning of the road of Jesus coming to the people. And so today we hear that commissioning, that certifying Jesus is about to go out and do what God had sent him there to do. That Jesus was looking at the road ahead and where that ultimately will lead. But there were first things first that he needed to take care of. He needed to get himself right, correct. He needed to get him 
yourself packed for the journey. And so, right off the bat, he knew what he needed to do. He needed to be baptized. And in that time, baptism was not the same as we see it today as this moment when God transcends and descends upon this place and a covenant is made between the soul and between God that God is now part of that life and that we are part of the guiding system that goes with that. The Jewish act of baptism was more of a, a repentance and washing up and going forth again. Unlike us, they could be baptized every time they sinned. It was part of their cleansing ritual if they had done something that would make them unclean. Whether that would be a skin disease or if they touched the wrong animal, if they did something else. Baptism was one of those ways they could be made right with God and move forward. And John the Baptist was somebody that was taking that upon himself and doing it, but he was doing it in a way that really upset a lot of people because he didn't just say, come and do this once. He was talking about, come and do this and repent. Really repent. Not until you need it again, but do it once and get it, get yourself right with God. He was also proclaiming that there was going to be somebody else coming that was going to make it so it was permanent. The message version, I love when it talks about the fact that Jesus was going to come and he was going to baptize them with the Holy Spirit and make him make us right from the inside out instead of just getting us clean on the outside. So when Jesus showed up on the shore of the Jordan River, some of the other gospel lessons that tells us that John didn't want to do it, didn't feel worthy. Mark skips right to the chase and says, he did it. And we hear those words from God, you are my beloved. And Jesus is sent on that road. But that road isn't easy. The wilderness that Jesus went into in this Mark version, we don't hear the whole issue of the temptations and that stuff. Like I said, Mark gets right to the chase and says, he went there for 40 days and he just dealt with the wild animals and the angels then helped clean him back up when he was done. But the Judean wilderness is that place where you didn't want to be. You still don't want to be. It's that place from the south of Jericho west of Jerusalem and it's along the coast of the Dead Sea and it literally is for the most part dead it's exactly what the psalmist was describing in Psalm 23 where he said though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death when you walk through those valleys you can feel death because it would take nothing but a sprained ankle or to fall down and you would perish because it drops 1,200 feet like two miles I mean it's one of the deepest step drops from Jerusalem down to this Dead Sea there's only small portions of green pasture and of still water that is fresh to drink the shepherds know where they're at because they still raise sheep on these hills and cliffs of these valleys of death. And thus the psalm. And that is where Jesus went for 40 days to prepare his heart, to prepare his soul, to fast and to be with God so that when he took those steps on the road, he was ready. And that's what God is calling each of us now, the beginning of 2016, to cleanse our hearts, prepare our souls, find a place where we can go and prepare ourselves.
not saying you need to go to some place like the Judean wilderness. But I want to tell you, two years ago, shortly after that service, that it was a, a joy and a privilege to be a part of. Part of me says very similar to what Jesus would have felt that day of the baptism. Singing and celebration and knowing that I was doing the thing that God wanted me to do. I kissed my wife goodbye and I waved to my friends as they got on a bus and they left me. And at midnight, as that bus rolled out of Bethlehem, and I realized that I was alone. Fear would not quite be the right word, but a whole lot of am I doing really the right thing? Am I ready to spend 40 days doing what God wants me to do? To prepare for the ministry that God wants me to do? And I wasn't sure. It was only through prayer, through reading the Bible, through sitting in a room and concentrating, allowing the people around me to minister to me and be embraced by Palestinian Christians and the friends that I made, that at the end of that 40 days, it was hard to leave. But I had made a choice that I needed to get back. I needed to finish seminary. I'd been told by the DS that there was something she needed to talk to me about. This is the first part of February. But I wasn't quite ready. Because you see, the Judean wilderness has no color. It's about as brown as any Methodist hallway. So I had decided that it's for my own soul I needed to stop and have a small bit of recovery. So my flight back was made so that I would fly into Heathrow and I rented a car and I spent three days with uh, friends sleeping on their couch, hanging out with their newborn grandbaby and just spending some time to allow myself to be cleansed but I want to tell you there was one day <coughs> as I took a drive to a place called um, Lathrum, if I'm pronouncing it right. It's the place where Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star was written by a guy looking out his window. It's also the place where the, the nursery rhyme of crooked little man in a crooked little house, I don't know the rest of it, but they point out the house and it was that. But as I drove through that town, they have a great, wonderful Anglican cathedral at the top of the hill because it's a wool industry. And it had been raining for days. And as I pulled up there, I parked the car to walk out to see this familiar place. The clouds broke. The sun invaded this pasture. And I fell to my knees and I wept. It was so your imagination can imagine of green. Greener than the stoles that you have on. Greener than any grass I've ever seen growing anywhere else because it was fresh, it was wet, and the sun was pouring down on that hilltop. And I knew that God was with me at that place and that I was ready to move on down that road to go back to seminary, to finish the hardest part of the exams and things that I had to go ahead with. And I knew that from that moment on, I had the assurance that no matter where I went, no matter what I did, no matter what shadow, no matter what valley, no matter where I was at, God had now prepared that table in the presence of whatever enemy so that I was fully nourished to go and to do. So I stand here today to tell you, you can have the same thing. God wants to show you that green pasture. God wants to set you down next to that still waters. God wants to fill that banquet table in front of your enemy so that you can relax 
and not worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. Because God needs you to be able to step down that road. So today, as we finish to worship, as we head back to Sunday school, I want you to ask God this week where he wants you to go to prepare. What you need to do. In fact, I would encourage you to take the 23rd Psalm, any version you want, and place it in front of you and read it every morning. Read it slowly. Read it fast. Break it up into new sections like you've never read before. Stop at one spot and let it sink in through the rest of the day. Ask God to show you the green pastures, to show you the shepherd, the still waters, to remind you that you may have already walked through multitude valleys of fear and death. To remind you that you are already living the rest of your lives in the house of God. So that you can wrap that yourself around yourself, just like Jesus did on that morning on the shore of Galilee. He had to go back out to another dark place to remind himself of all that he'd already done so that he could confidently tell his disciples, let's go from here. I've got a job to do, to preach the good news, to cast out demons, to go and do and to be. And that is what God is calling. Those of you that are my age or maybe a little bit older, and if you happen to have watched The Wiz this last Christmas when it was on, happens to be one of my favorite songs from high school. Tells you just exactly how old that musical is. Because we got to play that in jazz band. And I loved it so much that I convinced my parents that I needed to see that on stage. So for my 18th birthday, we went to Chicago went to the Chicago Theater. We made a big weekend of it and stayed in a hotel and went down there and had seats and I got to sit through the whiz and to sing along with, it's the only song I knew the words to. But that song tells us that it's not just a quick journey. It's not just getting up and running off. God really does want you just to ease on down the road. Because if you stand still, you won't get anywhere. If you stand still, God can't use you. If you stand still, God can't make you better. God can't make the people around you better. God can't make this world better. So this next week, down that road a little bit. Let us pray. Lord, I ask that you pour out your spirit upon us gathered here. For these words, Lord, I ask that you allow them to find a place in the hearts and minds and souls. And Lord, I thank you. I thank you for getting me through one more valley. So Lord, today, make us your travelers.